Hey guys, Dr. Ben here. Welcome to a power pack brokerpreneur bite. Get ready to dive into proven strategies for recruiting top talent, retaining your best agents, and skyrocketing sales in the next 10 minutes. I'm your host, of course, Dr. Ben Spears, along with our real estate guru, Matt Vai. Join us as we unravel the secrets to take your brokerage to new heights. Let's dive in. If you're not communicating, there's, it can only lead to one thing. Right. I, it could lead to a couple of things, but right. our next point, it's going to lead to these two things for sure. Right. Yeah. It's going to lead, it's going to lead to not only agents, but even you as well as a broker Yep. feeling very overstressed. Yep. And when everyone in the office is overstressed or feeling like, gosh, I'm ready to just pull my hair out, then the environment becomes toxic. Right. right? That that's when it's really time to start looking at yourself in the mirror start pulling the weeds in your garden yep. and saying, how can I clean this up? Because th once you have a toxic environment, like you're, you're not worried about one person leaving. Right. Absolutely. Right? You're so, worried about the bus pulling up. <laughs> that's right. When you're out of town. So here's the thing to, to keep in mind about burnout. Okay. Cause that's part of what you're talking about. Right. So you got to yep. work hard, work smart, work balance. Right. We talk about that all the time too. What happens is people burn out at a different pace. Okay. And so what you end up with is some of the agents in the office that have been there for a long time or at a different place in burnout than brand new agents are, or that your staff is, or that you are. And so all of a sudden you have tools and systems that aren't working the way that they're supposed to, or they are working, but there's no training and teaching how people how to do it. You have people flaming out at different stages. And as you have them flaming out at different stages, that builds that toxic environment that you were talking about. And the issue that you have is when there's an exodus, when something comes along that offers a certain amount of structure that they say that they're looking for, that's when you have three, four, five, six, eight, 10, 15, 20, 30, 50 people leaving your office all at the same time. Is yeah, because they're exactly. like, because one person says, oh yeah, this isn't working the, the way I thought. And the other person says, that's not what I thought. And this person says this, whatever. And then somebody walks into that crowd and says, hey, I heard over at so-and-so, this is how it is. And that fixes all the problems for all the people. Yeah. And the, you know what they're willing to do as a group? They're willing to give it a try as a group if the environment that they're in currently is toxic. They're willing to give it a shot. And then that's when you have that mass exodus. That's when you have a lot of people leave. Yeah. So the flip side of that from a recruiting standpoint, right? So that's re recruiting on the flip side of that. It, it might seem simple, okay? It's hard to do consistently if you don't have a communication plan like we just talked about. But you need to constantly get your message out to your people and to the people that you're recruiting on how you help them not be in a bad environment. So that's the recognition of the agents like we talked about. That's yep. the training on a regular basis that, that we talked about. That's having people and resources so that from a support standpoint, all of the support does not need to be on the broker's shoulders. You need to, from a recruiting standpoint, when you're originally talking to whoever you're talking to, I hope that you're not sitting there selling how supportive you are going to be as the broker of the company. That's not what you should be selling. What you should be selling is how great the tools and systems are, how awesome the training is, how the systemization of things is going to help them, and how you have a team of people that work together to make that uh, agent as successful as possible. That way, the first time they can't get in touch with you, they don't think that the whole world is falling apart. Yeah. This isn't about you and your ego as the manager. This is about the system that allows them to perform at a high level. That is the only way you're going to be able to scale is if you have that system and that you're communicating that on a regular basis to the agents you're talking yeah, to us from a recruiting yeah, standpoint. If you, mark, if you market it that way and you're, communi you, you're communicating that way, you're basically telling, you're telling the agents that you have now, you're telling the agents that are coming aboard or you're telling the ones that, that you want to come aboard. I, I have a guaranteed way, a proven way to, for you to succeed. And it's not all leveraged and hinged on one and one single person, yep. right? This is the brokerage that you're at right now is a house of cards, right? Right. If your broker goes on vacation, does everybody get stressed and pull their hair out? Yeah, I totally get it. That doesn't happen at our brokerage, right? Because we have proven, proven processes and systems that keep everything going, whether I'm there or not. When I, when, when I own a brokerage, when I run brokerages, oh. I was embarrassed if I couldn't leave and things fell apart. I was not, I was not gratified when I couldn't be there and things not work the way they were supposed to. It was the exact opposite. If I've left and everybody knew that I was gone, meaning that they needed things and they weren't happening, that's a, that was a problem for me. 
Oh, for sure. I wanted to make sure that whenever I left, everybody was like, oh, no, it's all good. We got this. Uh, you might need this from Matt. He'll get back and that's not an emergency, but otherwise so-and-so can handle it. And this is how this can work. You want to make sure that your environment is a healthy environment, not without the leadership. That's not what I'm saying. It has to have that leadership and yep. everybody has to have that expectation that if Matt went out of town, everybody knew, man, this better run smoothly. When he comes back, if, if there's people saying this didn't happen and that didn't happen and everything, he's going to be looking at who didn't do their job the way they were supposed to, because the bases should be covered, period. Yep. Yeah, oiled machine. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. That's exactly right. Matt, any final thoughts before we before I close this up? No, I don't think so, Ben. I think, I think as long as people grab onto this and look at both sides of it, what's happening in my brokerage, the re-recruiting side, and what's happening from, from how I can project myself into the market on why agents leave, I think that they'll be able to take at least a little bit of this information and, and, put, it into, and put it into use, use pretty easily to help impact their bottom line and grow their profitability. Yep, I, can, I completely agree. All right, guys. So if you are listening to us on iTunes, Spotify, Deezer, Stitcher, any of those places, make sure you hit that button and follow the podcast. If you happen to be watching this on YouTube, make sure you hit that red subscribe button and that bell right beside of it, and you'll get notified every time we drop a new episode. If you have any questions for Matt or myself, feel free to just send me an email, ben at prospectboomerang.com. And we'll get back to you super fast. And we'll usually have some sort of download or something that, that, that will really help with any questions that you would have. So we'll be happy to send that over to you. Other than that, we create those things. We do these podcasts. We interview the guests. We do them for so many reasons. But there's really one that just, it just seems to stand out every single time. Why is that, Matt? Because we just want to be part of their win. <laughs>